Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors. That the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors. That the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel, and found Jesus, a young donkey, and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I praise the hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah
Welcome to St. John Lutheran Church and School. Phil Rigdon is my name, pastor here at St. John, and we welcome you. It is our joy to be together, gathered around God's wonderful word, his song and prayers and message. We look forward to worshiping with you today. Please be aware that always that you can be a part of our worship here on the website or also YouTube and Facebook. Today we'll take an opportunity to celebrate Palm Sunday as the Lord goes into Jerusalem and right away he is praised as King and Savior, but eventually, of course, he will go to the cross later in the week. We look forward to meditating with you on this wonderful word. We welcome you and we pray that this is a blessing for you today.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Hosanna to the Son of David. Your King comes to you righteous and having salvation. When we could not come to him because of our lost condition, he came to us in the person of his Son, Jesus Christ. He humbled himself and became obedient to the cross that we might behold his loving face and feel again the embrace of our dear Father in heaven. Gracious Gracious God, God, I confess that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed by what I have done and by what I have left undone. Forgive me and give me strength to turn from sin and to serve you in newness of life. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. Through the Holy Spirit, God cleanses us and gives us the power to proclaim the mighty acts of the one who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Your love, O Father God, is seen most clearly in the suffering, death, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Transform us by your self-giving love to follow the servant way of Jesus until that day when he comes again in glory. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Today's Old Testament lesson is Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 9a. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens, He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's epistle lesson is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour is come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. 
But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard that it had thundered. Another said, an angel spoke to him. Jesus answered, this voice came for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So the crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. When Jesus had done these things, he departed and hid himself from them. Though he had done so many signs before them, they still did not believe in him so that the word spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed what he heard from us, and to whom has the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, for again Isaiah said, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah said these things because he saw his glory and spoke of him. Nevertheless, many even of the authorities believed in him, but for fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it, so that they would not be put out of the synagogue, for they love the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. On this Palm Sunday celebration. Well, believe it or not, for all of the people who apply to the big-name universities here in our country, only a few are accepted. For example, if you look at Stanford University, of all the folks who apply to that place, 5% are accepted. The same is true of others. For Harvard, it's 6%. For Yale, it's also 6%. So, many people apply, but only some are accepted. Now, this issue of acceptance, we see it with Jesus Christ as well. Remember what's happening with Jesus at this time of Palm Sunday, as Jesus goes into Jerusalem. Before, Jesus is up on the mountain of transfiguration, and then he comes down. He was glorified there, and he goes into Jerusalem. And now, of course, he is accepted. And how is he accepted? The people come and they say, here's Jesus, the son of David, Hosanna. He is coming to save us. They say, Jesus is the Savior. He is the Messiah. He's the Christ, the anointed one. And he's going to come and solve things for us here in our nation. They come and they wave palm branches at him. They take off their clothes, their outer cloaks, and they place them on the ground in order that Jesus' animal could walk over them as he comes along. But then what happens later in the week? We know that finally Jesus Christ will be betrayed by the very people who welcomed him. Judas will betray him for 30 pieces of silver. Peter will betray him as he is asked three times, aren't you part of Jesus' group? Aren't you Jesus' friend? Even some of the people that eventually welcomed Jesus at the beginning of the week, some of them were paid by the leaders of the Jews, the Pharisees, and the teachers of the law. And they too screamed out, crucify him, crucify him, as Jesus stood on trial for things that he had not done. Well, what does that illustrate for us? It illustrates with the folks that we just talked about that sometimes... Sometimes when we are young, brand new Christians, it's easy for us to say, oh yeah, Jesus is Savior. Oh yes, I believe in him. He is my Lord and I'm going to live my life for him no matter what. At the beginning of the week, the people accepted him, but later on, they cast him off. Now, what is that like for us? Maybe the Lord brought you to faith through the gospel or holy baptism when you were very small. Maybe that happened later for you in your life. Either way, we recognize that sometimes when we are young in the faith, when we have a lot to earn, the idea of the gospel seems very simple. We think, you know what? All right, yeah, Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm going to heaven. Very good. That's simple. No sweat. But what happens when the Lord calls me to grow? What happens when I start to read other parts of the Bible, other than just the cross and the resurrection? We recognize that sometimes it's easy at the beginning of growing in Christ, but it gets harder as we go along. For example, we hear of teachings in the Bible that maybe trouble us, true as they are. For example, the Bible says that there is no salvation for all people, but there is salvation only for those who trust in Jesus Christ as their Lord. It doesn't matter how nice these people were. It doesn't matter how much good they did in the world. Anyone who dies without Jesus Christ spends eternity in hell. Wait a minute, that's hard to accept. I don't know if I can do Jesus Christ and Christianity anymore. We have to come to the reality, especially in this day and age, that the truth of the Bible, what God says, 
is more important, and honoring that truth is more important than inclusivity and tolerance, that we must hold to the truth regardless of the offense that it is. We hear others that are timely for today, too. We recognize that God says that marriage is for one man and for one woman, and that sexuality is only to be expressed in that situation, and that all other sorts are sinful. And even though that is challenging for us today, that is the truth. And so what we see is when I'm simple in the faith, and when I'm only looking at Jesus Christ, absolutely, but when I need to grow and i got to learn more, that's when things become challenging. A comedian, Stephen Wright, once said, you know, a lot of people are afraid of heights, but I'm afraid of widths. You know, when we think about this issue of accepting Christ or things being easy at the beginning, a lot of it is about fear. The gospel passage for today, it says, you know what, there were some people who saw, yeah, Jesus is Lord. They saw Jesus in his signs and they said, yep, there's the Savior over there. But they were afraid to say so. They were afraid to come out and say, yes, that's Jesus in public. Because... Why? They were afraid of being thrown out of the synagogue, and also they were more interested in the acceptance of men, the approval of men. That was more important to them than honoring God. Well, of course, what's the application in my life? How do I see that happen in my life? And how do I see it happening, or how do you see it happening in your life? Let me give you a couple of examples. As a parent, I may say, you know what? Yeah, my children, I'm raising them in the faith. It's important. It's the most important thing. But wait a minute. Now there's a soccer league that meets at the same time as Bible study, Sunday school, and church. Well, you know, I, I, I want my child to have a good athletic experience and to learn about character and getting along with people. So That church stuff, that can go on a little bit later. Maybe I'm a college student, and I go to the university, and I'm getting pressure from all of my friends to say, give up religion, give up Christianity. Atheism is the way to go. That's the enlightened path. And another example, perhaps I have a daughter or a son who is in love with someone that they're dating, and they're living with that person. And now it's my job as a parent to say, you know what, I love you, but this is unacceptable, and you can't live that way. These are three examples of how many times we buckle under the pressure, and we say, I want the love and the approval of other people more than I want to honor God. We fall into that trap. And that is why, of course, Jesus came into the world to take care of that for us. Well, there was a guy driving down the road. He was driving down the road behind this truck. And all of a sudden, a big box falls off the back of the truck, and it lands on the ground. Well, the guy slams on the brakes, and he swerves over into the other lane to avoid the box. Well, a little bit later, of course, this police officer sees what happens, and then he pulls the driver over to the road, and he walks over, and he starts riding the guy a ticket for unsafe, for reckless driving. Well, while he's doing so, the police officer looks at the box on the road and he recognizes that it's full of nails and tacks. So, he comes over and he starts writing the ticket again and the guy says, you know what, officer, you can't give me a ticket. Look at all those tacks and those nails on the road. And the guy says, all right, but I'm still going to write you a ticket. And the guy says, well, what for? I didn't do anything. What's the ticket for? And the officer says, tax evasion. Pretty bad, huh? Well, all of us, of course, are troubled by taxes, especially when we raise taxes. When taxes are raised on us, we think that that is no good. But as we look at the gospel lesson for today, we realize that there was a raising that was very good a raising that was good for me and for you. 
Jesus talks about in the passage for today, he says that the Son of Man will have to be lifted up. The Son of Man will be raised up. Now, what's he talking about? Of course, we know, as the Bible says, Jesus is talking about his death and his resurrection. He's talking about the cross, that he's going to be lifted up off the ground. Remember how crucifixion worked. The person was laid back on the cross, and then their arms were nailed to the wood. Then their feet were nailed to the cross, and being completely helpless, Jesus was then lifted up for the world to see. Now go back to the book of Numbers. What's happening? The people of Israel are wandering in the wilderness, and they start to grumble and to complain. They worship false idols. They worship false religions. And God, in his discipline, comes and he introduces snakes, serpents, that come and bite the people. And the people are poisoned. Now, God is a merciful God, and he comes along and he says, Moses, I want you to take a bronze, fiery serpent, and I want you to put it on the pole. And tell the people that if they look at the serpent on the pole, they will be cured of their poison. So we look at this pole with the bronze serpent lifted up, and if the people look at it, it's a source of salvation. And so we look then at Jesus Christ, and he says that I will have to be lifted, I'll have to be raised. And when I do, I will draw all people to myself. In other words, Jesus is saying in the same way that you look at the serpent on the pole, there is salvation from poison. Jesus says that if you look to the cross of Jesus Christ and you see through faith given by the Holy Spirit that there is the Savior, that you'll be forgiven of your sins. And that is what we have. The cross tells us two things. We look at Jesus almost completely naked on the cross, bleeding, sweating, crying out in misery, and I see shame. I see the reality of my sin. Not Jesus' sin, but in his love he takes my sin on himself. Jesus becomes sin, and I see the amazing love of God who saves me at his own expense. And then I see God's amazing grace. And so as Jesus dies on the cross, he has paid for all of my sins. That's the wonderful joy of looking at Christ on the cross, is we see his mercy and his love and forgiveness. We are forgiven. Jesus says something else in our passage for today. He says that unless a kernel of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it produces nothing. It is left alone. But if that kernel of wheat goes into the ground and dies, it produces much fruit. As always, Jesus is talking about himself. What happens? Jesus, lifted up for our sins, dies on the cross, and he is placed in the tomb. In other words, the seed of our salvation, the seed of the woman, going all the way back to Genesis, is now placed in the ground. Jesus Christ is that kernel that is placed in the earth. And what happens? Because he has died, because he has gone into the earth, he rises and he produces much fruit. And so I look at Jesus Christ and I see how he has risen from the dead. And I recognize that he is the first fruits of our salvation. Paul calls him these first fruits, the first evidence that the seed that has gone into the earth has now produced those good fruits. It is proof that we are forgiven. Now, if Jesus is the first fruits, what's the rest of the fruit? That's you, and that's me. Because Christ has died on the cross, because he rose again, we continue to be the fruits of his work on the cross. And when we look at his resurrection, we also look to ours because we are forgiven of our sins, because Jesus paid all that we owed. Now we look forward to the day that we will rise from the dead. This is the work of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we pray that this message has been a blessing to you, and that you feel the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue with our common confession of faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. continue at this time with the prayers of the day. 
Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we come before you today in prayer. And we begin with this verse from your holy word, 2 Corinthians 4, 15. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, you have poured out your richest blessings on us. We thank you for food, for clothing, for house and home. We thank you for those who are caring, for those who are ill at this time, for those, our leaders, who are working on helping us through this challenging time. Dear Lord, as we pray for challenges related to COVID-19, we remember your word, Psalm 147, verse 3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Dear Lord, for those who are ill with COVID-19, we ask for your healing, control their pain, give them restoration and patience. Dear Lord, we also ask that you would care for their families as you work through them to care for those who are struggling at this time. Give us peace and perseverance as we deal with the illness itself and all of the attending consequences. For all those who are struggling in need of healing, healing body, mind, and soul, we remember your word in Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, who forgives all your iniquity and heals all your diseases. Dear Lord, for the various struggles that we deal with because of sin in our world, in our body, mind, and soul, we ask that you would first of all bring healing, bring restoration, and end this suffering. We ask that you would help us as Christians to see the meaning in our suffering, whatever it may be, knowing that you use it for your ultimate good. We ask that you would control pain, give us sustenance and patience and perseverance while we deal with these challenges. For those who are grieving the loss of, love, loss of loved ones, we remember Isaiah 41. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. Dear Lord, without the work of your son, Jesus Christ, we would be lost forever. But for those who are in faith, we are joyful as we are reminded of the resurrection and the reunion around the throne. Dear Lord, because you died and rose again, through faith we know that we too will rise again. Comfort us in this pain as we grieve the loss of loved ones. For the ministry of our school, we remember James chapter 1. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. Dear Lord, we thank you for the blessing of St. John Lutheran School and for all schools as we educate our children. Dear Lord, remind us that above all, the greatest knowledge, the greatest education is the knowledge of your son, Jesus Christ, that through faith we would be forgiven of our sins. Care for our administrators, our teachers, families, and students, as we work through technology and mail and phone calls and all of the means you've given to us to continue to educate our children in the midst of these challenges. As we pray for missionaries and for outreach, we remember March, Mark 16. And he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Dear Lord, you promised us that you will abide with the church, that you will use your Holy Spirit to reach out with the gospel, the good news, and holy baptism. We pray for missionaries around the world who are dealing with restrictions and isolation at this time, and also for each of us as we are called to reach out with the gospel. Help us to use social media, phone calls, whatever it happens to be, to continue to reach out with the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, for special prayers and all those that are not articulated here, we remember 1 Thessalonians 5. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Dear Lord, now we take a moment to bring before you all of our prayers that are not spoken here, those in our hearts and minds. Dear Lord, we, we bring before you all of these prayers, knowing that you will answer us as our Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has opened the gates of heaven. In his name, amen. We continue as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the glory, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising its shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Yeah.